Welcome to Executive Insights. I'm Nishin Liu, partner with the IT Media Group, a CIO-centric media company. My guest today is Dr. Mo Nuzari, a scholar practitioner who makes things happen through technology. In this episode, we explore the topic of management excellence through the execution of strategy, as well as Mo's research finding around the concept of a self-managed team. Stay tuned. Hi, Mo. So good to see you. Welcome to Executive Insights. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Mo, you have an extensive academic and technology industry background, branding yourself a scholar practitioner. First of all, what does that mean? And second of all, what unique value do you bring to the classrooms and the business world? Yes, thank you. And um, thanks for having me. And uh, um, yeah, definitely that's a very interesting question. And uh, uh, so basically a scholar practitioner means that I teach what I know and uh, what I know is from what I practice at work. And then I practice what I teach. So basically connecting the academia to the, to the practices and, and to the business world constantly um, to stay in touch with what is real and what is happening in the world. And also from the other way around, bringing the latest knowledge, research in academia to the, to the world, to the uh, business world and to the, to the work. I think the, the, what, what, what I've seen the students really, really appreciate it uh, when they realize that the problems that I'm talking about actually happened on the day that uh, I'm teaching uh, about it to them. So there has always been an interest uh, from the student's point of view that are these real? How do we use this in real world? And when they hear that this is exactly what I did uh, personally at work on the day or the day before, then it becomes even more realistic. And then I ask them to do the same thing. When I re read the reviews from the students every term, that's a big plus that uh, they always appreciate uh, connection of the academia to the business world on a regular basis. Yeah, definitely. I think one of the missing links between the supply and the demand side of the talent is the relevance. And you're certainly in a unique uh, position to bridge that gap. And Mo, last time when you and I caught up, we also talked about your passion. And I had a glimpse of this cute robot you built from the scratch and also <laughs> yeah, and, and also the 3D printing collection that you created. Needless to say, you're a very talented technologist. But, you know, you also talked about your passion for leadership and management best practices and specifically management excellence through the execution of strategy. Do you care to elaborate that? Absolutely. A few years ago, when I was studying about um, the, the strategies and how to form the best strategy, the research led to some facts and uh, some other researchers that um, had identified the rate of the, the success rate of the strategy execution at a global scale to be at two two percent, which means that uh, a lot of companies get stuck in. Uh, mission statements, overall a strategy, goals and objectives, and it doesn't get into an actual execution stage. Or if they try, it, it's not successful. 2% was something that I thought, okay, there is a problem there and maybe I can be part of the solution. So I did the research and overall goals and objective of that research was to find a way to uh, increase the, the rate of success and which led to creation of a framework for a strategy execution. No matter if the strategy is good or bad, but um, there are now um, part of that research and other researchers there are now frameworks on how to execute on, on a strategy and how to successfully deliver that. Around the same kind of thought process, I, I was looking to see how this has happened during the course of the history, not just the business world, but also 
history, going back to uh, when um, um, you know people battled for what they wanted to gain. Not that it's not happening nowadays, but uh, so that research led to um, creation of a book called uh, Art of Leadership uh, Through Battles. And in that book, I actually uh, explain how uh, during the course of the history, leaders have been able to execute their strategy. And that's uh, um, kind of connecting um, the, what we have learned in history into today's business world as well. So the, the difference between when we do battles or when we do business is that obviously the goal is to achieve what we wanted to achieve, but what it takes to succeed is a lot of uh, planning, a lot of uh, flexibility in order to achieve the, the goals and objectives of those plans and uh, staying in touch with reality of where we are and staying in touch with reality on um, the, the fact that everything is going is changing and how we react to that change, how we accommodate or how we create a space that we need in order to uh, successfully execute our strategy. Yeah, and you know that 2% success rate you just mentioned converting from, you know, the mission statement to strategy to successful execution is truly astounding. And, you know, I think that's meaningful work by creating a practical framework and also taking all your research findings and learnings into this Art of Leadership Through Battles book. And I can't wait to, to buy the book and, and read it. So, you know, another fascinating topic actually related to the management best practices that you spoke about last time was management outcomes through observing nature. And I found that truly fascinating. And in fact, your PhD dissertation was focused around a self-managed teams identifying common human behavior patterns by observing wildlife. Can you elaborate on this topic, what that is, why it's so important in today's hybrid world, and also as an individual, how can they acquire those behavior patterns to be a more valuable contributor? I'm sure we all have been fascinated by looking at the birds flying in the sky and creating all those fascinating, mesmerizing patterns as they fly. Or we have wondered around uh, the, the notion that how come would they, the fish uh, you know, swim together, school of fish is like as if there is one um, leading them. But the reality is in nature, specifically around those uh, social beings, um, there is no leader, so they somehow know how to do it, somehow know how to act as if there is a higher level of intelligence among them. Whereas uh, what they do, what they have perfected during the millions year of years of evolution is basically following some simple rules or behaviors. And I thought, can I tap on that to, to see what we can learn to do the same to, to some degree and what, what has made them successful? And you have you see, and it's not just about certain species. So I, I did a, a lot of research on um, not the field research, but 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 thinking about and bringing uh, the behavior of a lot of mammals like like wolves, bats, and uh, some birds, um, and of course the famous uh, honeybees and and uh, termites and and fireflies and ants. So they're extremely interesting behaviors that one wonders how they have come up with. However they have come up with it, we can learn from that. And that's, uh, that was the topic that I entered to through the, the, the process of the PhD. I realized maybe there is something in there and I started researching and I uh, mapped that to the concept of, or, or one, of the, one of the use cases for that, uh, and maybe the easiest one was to map it to the self-managed teams. Now that phrase is a little bit um, wordy, but a lot of the companies nowadays have teams that are more or less independent and different from the rest of the company. These are the teams or group, groups of people who have been given a lot of authority to do what needs to be done to create a product, to solve a critical problem. You may have heard the, the terms like tiger team or this project team, or they actually have code names sometimes. Um, and a lot of companies in IT world have 
agile teams that they are given pro uh, uh, the authority to to handle or to deliver a, a product. Um, so it's more or less, they all fit into that definition of self-managed teams. Now, we talk about the behavior of how we can learn from nature and what we call intelligent swarms or the groups of social beings that uh, represent or present uh, behaviors that we can learn from them. And uh, during my research, I came up with a few uh, behaviors and I'm going to mention a few of them. I actually have some notes in here. These are not unusual. This is not something weird that we're gonna say, oh, if you wanted to do this, you have to do this like, uh, like the, the insects or the other social beings, but they are they're known. But putting them all under the same umbrella to say these are intelligent swarm social behaviors that may or may not help with uh, with us achieving more in the form of a teamwork among human beings. That was the question, and that was the research, and that research paid off and and showed that actually there is tremendous progress, tremendous uh, advantage of following uh, uh, this set of behaviors all together that represent uh, intelligent swarms behavior. Some of these are um, creating a deep understanding of the goals. Everyone knows uh, or should know what the goals and objectives of the, of the work that is underway is or, or are. Uh, and then also understand the plan. Deep knowledge of the plan has helped uh, the organizations or teams or self-managed teams to, to be more successful. Everyone knows what has, has to happen. Everyone knows what their, their duties are. They understand the, the plan. And then, of course, looking for changes, keeping an eye on what changed, and the plan to be flexible enough to, to accommodate for the change. As we know, the only constant in the world is change. Um, and then other areas like knowledge transfer, teams that are more successful, they have the same level of knowledge. They constantly talk to each other let each other know what is happening with the team, what is happening with the event. So there's a higher level of knowledge transfer. And as part of that, there is a tremendous amount of communication, successful communication happening between the team members. So that's another behavior. Um, successful teams break down their problems and each group or subgroup or each person deals with the a smaller problem on their own and then they come back and share the results with the with the team so that at any point of time multiple problems are being discussed and and resolved by sub teams or subcommittees or uh, team members so that's another behavior and um, maybe the most important one is opine that's the one word that i i came up with to to, to share with with you have to every team member uh, of a successful self-managed team, uh, and in general, any team, um, it, are the ones that everyone participates. Everyone opines on, on the ongoing matters. So no one is just sitting back and waiting for a manager or a leader to talk. They all participate, they're all part of it. They're all equally contributing. But that's what it is. It, if you follow these in, in a team setting, the chances are that you're going to be much more successful, have a higher performance team that is going to be meeting more KPIs and uh, happier teams. And that's that's another thing. The self-managed teams that follow these rules and, and behaviors, they are happier and they have a better work-life balance as a result as well. To your point earlier, these are not, you know, sort of, wow, something that's shell shocking that no one has ever heard of before, but it's common sense practice principles that when you're truly following everything that's, you know, that that's been researched and proven to be true, then you will make progress. And I think they're especially relevant in this hybrid world today where almost every team has to become a self-managed team. And according to Gartner, the hybrid working model is the one of flexibility, adaptability, and also shared ownership on the part of a employer and the employee. So accountability does go both ways. And I think as a individual contributor, you have to realize that you are accountable for your own career development and you are 
accountable for your own growth and understanding those basic principles and follow through every day is so valuable. So I wanted to um, pivot a little bit and reflecting on your own career journey and the lessons learned. Are there anything that you wish you could have done differently? Yes, of course. I mean, uh, there are always um, things that if I had known a few years earlier, I would have done things faster earlier. But we are, each one of us are on our own path. Uh, we learn and we deal with the, with the problems in our lives the way that is unique to us. It's hard to say that, um, you know, I, I always um, think that um, yes, that is true. If we had the knowledge, or I had the uh, personally, I had uh, the knowledge that I have now, it would have been different or better. But that's my path. That's how I have come. That's who I am now. And so instead of wondering about the past or procrastinating about the future, I can I can actually start working on what needs to be done now and uh, get things done. Be more organized to to towards my goals and objectives, and um, and deal with the situations as they come forward. Yeah, yeah, well said. Because as much as we all want to have foresight, most of us only have hindsight, and hindsight is always very clear. Right. So we we can never connect the dots forward, like Steve Jobs used to say, we can only connect the dots backwards. And, you know, the last question I have for you is any words of wisdom for our next generation? And if you had mm -hmm. to give advice to your own daughters, who I know are extraordinary in their own rights, what would you say to your girls? Um, what I've been telling them um... Um, and there is, I have told them so many times, so it's like a cliche. At some point of time, I was telling them miracles happen in a small steps. A wise man said miracles happen in a small steps. And then they actually had gone and, and, and looked at them and said, there's no, there's no such wise man. And I said, it is me. I'm telling you. And miracles happen in a small steps. So yeah, basically, my advice is to not to be afraid of the, how big a, a job ahead is. Maybe it's very hard to write a book, but if you if you commit yourself to do 500 words every night, then in two months you will have enough contents to to exactly uh, put a put a book together, and that's that's a big step towards a, a big goal that you might have in life. Next thing is to uh, really um, I've asked my daughters as well to follow their passion. Following the passion makes life much better the quality of life goes up and you do, you're doing what you love to do. And so without a mistake, following the passion uh, for the young generation, definitely I advise them to do, to do so. And while doing so, uh, take care of your health and uh, enjoy life because at the end of the day, it's, it's, a, it's not a straight line of uh, achieving goals and then start enjoying life. You have to do it at the same time. Sound advice. And on that note, Mo, I've truly enjoyed this conversation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Nasheen, thank you so much for having me in the, in the program. You're very welcome. You've been watching another episode of Executive Insights by the IT Media Group. I'm Nasheen Liu. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this conversation, please check out other content on our YouTube channel including CIO roundtable conversations and executive interviews. And don't forget to subscribe.